second corinthians chapter 12 1 and 2 king james version i'll seek your indulgence if you can rise to the reading of the word of god second corinthians chapter 12 1 and 2 it's not a movie it's a scripture amen one and two amen those who have the microphone please read with some boldness let's go let's do this two together amen it is, it is not, not expedient for, for me doubtless, doubtless to glory i will, I will come, come to visions and revelations of the lord i, I knew, knew a man in christ about 14 years ago whether in the body i cannot tell or whether out of the body i cannot tell god knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven. let's read again for for our faith faith comes by hearing let's read it again read it now read it with your spiritual insight amen let's go it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory i will come to visions and revelations of the lord i knew a man in christ about 14 years ago whether in the body i cannot tell or whether out of the body i cannot tell god knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven amen yep you can humbly sit down let's reduce the destruction try not to sleep right if you can and may the lord help us amen the question here is that paul made mention of third heaven if there's a third heaven where is the first and the second are you in this place paul made mention of third heaven that 14 years he was caught up in the vision he is not too sure whether he was in his body or out of his body but he encountered a man called christ and he encountered him in the third heaven this morning my goal is to establish the dwelling place of god as i talk about three types of heaven i'm going to establish the dwelling place in relation to the type of heavens amen i was going to go into where demons reside where spiritual weakness resides but if i do that i may alter the message so as grace is multiplied i will do teachings on demons and fallen angels then i can work it along to avoid confusion amen you know in my presentation the last two weeks i'm not even talking about hell i want to stay focused on the subject matter heaven is where we are going hell is not meant for us but we'll still talk about it amen because i know in your minds you'll be wondering some of you have believed maybe you are a student of the bible what will come to mind remember an angel was hijacked was kidnapped so where which heaven was he kidnapped we will come there when we talk about fallen angels and demons amen but for now we're going to talk about the three types of heaven from the passage of scripture we are just told that paul was talking about third heaven so today preset upon preset line upon line a little here a little there we will try to unpack where third heaven is we can't get to number three if we don't walk through one and two shout one and two so grace be established now this subject on heaven we still want to establish the reality about heaven so that it will not be like paul was having hallucination but truly there is heaven are you here genesis 1 1 new king james version in the beginning <laughs> i remember that video <laughs> in the beginning god created the heavens plural in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth the question is church of god where was god when he was creating heaven have you thought about that he's creating heaven and we know that from little knowledge is the vast solid material water that has been condensed in the sky that is heaven that's what we know so where was he when he was creating that where was he standing when he was creating this heaven we are talking about because the word is god created the heavens not heaven the heavens so when paul says that i was caught up in the third heaven your theology should be saved here because he's talking about a third heaven and in the beginning the law of first mention god created the heavens 
So Paul is not lying. There are heavens. Can we find here? Psalm 115 verse 16. So the heavens has also got levels. We want to establish that before we go into it. The highest heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth he, gave, he has given to mankind. The highest heaven belong to the Lord. So can we say that Paul was seeing the highest heaven? Since he was talking about the third heaven, is it the highest heaven? We will know by the time we are done. Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 66 verse 1. Today I will give you a lot of scriptures. Amen. Thus says the Lord, the heaven is my throne. So we are now establishing some information here. I said in the beginning, God did what? Created the heavens and the earth. So the heavens and the earth have the same birthdays. You can write it for free. The heavens and the earth, they all have the same birthdays. They were created on the same day. And we'll go into when, when was one created. Amen. Thus says the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my full store. Where is the house that you built unto me and where is the place of my rest? We are talking about the omnipresence of God. So if you are saying that God resides in a place, if you are not careful and don't bring clarity, we are limiting God to a location. As much as God is omnipresence, he revealed himself in the second Godhead, who is Jesus Christ. He has revealed himself in the second Godhead, who is Jesus Christ. And this Jesus has made us to understand that he is seated together with the Father. So where the Father is, Jesus is. So we can say that. It will be too early for you to understand, but you will understand at the end of the day. Amen. So God is saying, the heaven is my throne. He goes to tell us that heaven is the dwelling place. Which kind of heaven are we talking about? Is it the one that Paul saw? The first or the second one? Are you in the service? This morning I'm talking about three types of heaven. Amen. I want to show you something, an experience, an encounter in Acts chapter 7 verse 55. The other day when the Sahindrans were throwing stones against Stephen, my God, I, uh, hey my God, I pray that you see heaven. <laughs> I pray you see heaven. If Paul saw heaven, may you see heaven. I gave you an example of people who are on earth but they have access to heaven by the supernatural. The other day when the Sahindrans were throwing stones against Stephen, one of the disciples, his eyes were open. Why this case study before I proceed? Until you take your eyes off this earth, you will lose your focus on, earth, on heaven. Until you take your attention from this earth and place it on heaven, you can be distracted by the issues of life. This is a disciple, a man filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Sahindrans were throwing stones against him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God. Those who were here last week, we established this statement. The glory of God, the glory of God. Anybody who, who's, who, who have heavenly encounter, you always see the glory of God. Are you here? Am I speaking too fast? looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Are you in this place? The eyes of Stephen was open when they were throwing stones against him. His eyes was open to the heavens. I pray life will not make you lose your focus concerning your final home. Look, he said. Look, he said. I see heaven open and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. So even if I don't continue, even though I've not established which type of heavens we are talking about, we believe when Jesus ascended to heaven, he went to be at the right hand of God because at the time Stephen was having that encounter, Jesus was not on earth. So we know where Jesus resides. And Jesus said the other day, I and my father are where I am, there you may be. How can we be sure? John 17, 24. John 17, 24. 
if we don't believe what Stephen saw, John 17, 24. He said, Father, I desire that they also, they also, most of, they also, you've given me, may be with me where I am. They may behold my glory. Anytime there is heaven, there is the glory of God. They may behold my glory which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the earth. So where we are, they also may. So if Jesus is with the Father, he's put a petition before God that where we are, they also may be. So this alone established the, the fact that Jesus is with the Father and he's at the right hand side of the Father. And the place that we are talking about is a locatable place called heaven. Now the question is which one of them? Which one of them? May the Lord bless us. May the Lord bless us. Like I said, we can confirm this because they say the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. I said that heavens and the earth, they have the same birthdays. Don't forget. Amen. So we're going into types of heaven as described by the word of God. Are you ready? The first heaven is the atmospheric heaven. Genesis 1.20. I'm talking about the first heaven. Genesis 1.20, the King James Version. We want to establish the first heaven. And God said, I made a quick statement. I said, what is? Amen. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life. And the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Amen. And I look for the meaning of firmament. Firmament means the expanse of the sky. It is a vast solid dome created by God on the second day. Firmament. Amen. Are you in this service? So which heaven are we talking about? The atmospheric heaven. It's the heavens you can see as you lift up your head. The best of the air. The fowls of the air, you can see that is the first heaven. That is the atmospheric heaven. Amen. When you lift up your head right now, what you see, are not, I'm not talking about this route, in an open space, if you lift up your head, what you see in the sky is the atmospheric heaven. And that is the first heaven. It was created on the second day by God. Are we here? Are you sure you are here? Okay, let me add a scripture to it. Genesis 6, 7. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth human race I have created. And with the animals, the birds and the creatures that move along the ground, I regret that I have made them. So God said he's going to wipe the birds. So he wiped even the things in the first heaven, which are the birds that flies in the air. When God was destroying things, he didn't just destroy the things of the earth, but the things in the first heaven, including the birds. Amen. He wiped away everything. Now, I said last week that there is going to be a new earth and a new what? Jerusalem. God is going to crash everything on this earth, including the heavens, and reform it, and we'll come back on earth in our resurrected body. That is a teaching that we want to live here. We will continue next time. Amen. Are you here with me? So let's go to Isaiah 55. I'm still establishing the first heaven. I pray we will have the time. Isaiah 55, 9 to 10. Are you enjoying yourself? So for us, the heavens are higher than the earth. So it goes to suggest that, I don't know if astrologists or whatever, they've, they've measured the distance between earth and the first heaven. I don't want to go into that nautical mouse or whatever they call it. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. God was just showing us something. And my thoughts than your thought. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thee, but the water at the earth, make it bring forth, but it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Shout black man preach here. I don't know if you have ever waked up one morning and you saw that water was moving from the earth into the heavens. Have you ever seen it? So what God is saying that when my word drops down, it doesn't come back. It comes to do the reason why I sent it on earth. 
So it goes to say that in the atmospheric heavens, things move from there to the ground. Amen. Are you in this place? Are you sure you are here? So what I'm saying is that the atmospheric heaven, which is the first heaven, was created on the second day of creation. If you want to write, amen. The next heaven I want to talk about is the second heaven. Celestial heaven. We don't have much to say on the atmospheric heaven because you can see it. I know you want to go to the supernatural side. Uma uti super one heaven. Amen. But the heaven you are seeing is the first heaven. Where the birds are flying. The next one is the second heaven which we call the celestial heaven. Have I said it right? Yeah. That term describes the outer space. It includes the sun, moon and the stars. Celestial heaven. Amen. So the sun that you see, the moon that you see, they are not in the atmospheric heaven. Are you okay? They are in the second heaven. Are you okay? The fact that you see them does not mean that they are in the first heaven. The first heaven cannot contain the sun, the moon, and the stars. Anybody who has done faces will, will tell you that the size of the sun alone, when it falls on earth, it's not a joke. One star. Can somebody Google right now the size of the star? One star. So if they are in the atmospheric heaven, I don't know what is going to happen to us. So God has helped. You see, if you say there is no God, if you Google the, the size of one star and you ask yourself, no rope is holding it. So he asked Job the other day, are you the one who maintains the stars? Now, Kathy, take your bag and throw it up. The laws of gravity will bring your bag down. How come the laws have not brought the stars down? At least this should tell you that there is God. He holds the earth and holds the heavens in his hands. He has a way of keeping it. So don't be deceived for people to tell you that there is no God. Which institution has been able to hold the star for us? When God decides to send rain, who can say they will stop the rain? Do somebody have the size of the, what's the size of the star? One, just one. And there are days when you lift up your heads, you see many stars. Let's say God is even allowing only three to fall on earth. None of us will be left. But look at the weight and the size of such a thing. But Lord, the Lord has sustained it in the second heavens. Don't doubt what God says he will do for you. Don't doubt. Never doubt what God says he will do for you. Never doubt it. He's a faithful God. He's too powerful for you to doubt him. I said God is too powerful for you to doubt him. Because one or two things have not happened. You are doubting God. You are a joke. If I ask you to carry me for 30 minutes, even though I don't have weight, your neck will break. But this God has carried the star, not one star, stars. Galaxy of stars. He has contained them for years. There have been many troubles on earth. But we have never heard a star falling on it because God has a place for them. When God says something is finished, it is finished. Jesus said on Calvary, it is finished and no man can override it. No man can cancel it. It is finished. It is finished. Jesus said it. You just have to believe it. It is finished. You are limiting God by the limit you place on yourself. He said on Calvary, it is finished. And that blood that came on the grounds is still speaking. That is why they plotted evil against you. But the blood spoke for you because Jesus spoke on your behalf. You serve an almighty God. El Shaddai. He's a big God. He's a big God. There is nothing too hard for him. Just think about the star. Let's go to the moon. Look at the size of the moon. Look at the size of the sun. If God is to allow the sun to bright at its normal rate, all of us will burn into ashes. When we get to 120, you are complaining. Go and check the temperature of the sun. The original temperature of the sun. We cannot stand it for one second. But God has a way of regulating it. Yet there is no thermometer in his hands. I pray for you today that may you never doubt God. Look at the faithfulness of God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. 
you remain the same forever never doubt God because of one two small things that have not happened you are doubting God you know who is God he asked Job who commands the morning who said morning should come and morning came? Who said afternoon should come and afternoon came? Who said let there be night and there was night? This is the God that I'm talking about. The one that Jesus is standing by his side on the right hand side of God. On the right hand side of God. You serve a mighty God. Don't let the challenges of life limit you. See, this Jesus I'm talking to you about, he was on the high seas. When the disciples were complaining about a storm, he was sleeping. When Christ lives in you, the storm will come, but you will not see it. The storms will come, you will not see because greater is he that is in you than any storm that you are going through. We serve a big God. God. Go read physics. The land, the earth is covered with over 75% of water. If you dig 12 feet down right now, you'll get water. But there have never been a day you slept and you wake up and your room was filled with water because God has a place for them. So that problem, God said he has resisted it. He has put a, a stop to it. Just go to bed and believe that it has ended because God said so. Because God said so, consider it done. done. Let me preach. The second heaven. Matthew chapter 24 verse 29. Matthew 24 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. And the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven. Do you know that the moon don't have light? The moon takes its life from the sun. How did God do this calculation? <laughs> and the star shall fall from... You don't want the star to meet you here. That is why you have to be raptured. I just finished talking about the star. Don't let the star meet you here on earth. The Bible said immediately. When the Bible says immediately, it means immediately. At once by force immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened so people who don't make it people who are not raptured the element of the earth and of the heavens is going to fight them so it is not like a second chance the second chance you are going to pay with your life because when the man pay with his life you didn't value it Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. The moon shall not give her light. The stars, not one, you know the size now. The stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Talking about the celestial heaven. It will be shaken. The second heaven. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will not be here. You will watch proceedings from the throne room of God. You watch a live telecast from the throne room of God because you will be with the Lord because Jesus has petitioned the Father in John 17, 23, 24 that where we are, they also may be. We will not be here on earth. We shall be with the Father. Heaven is our home. We are citizens of heaven. We will not be a preview to this statement. We will not be around. We will not be around. I am fully persuaded that you will not be around. Church of God, I say you will not be around. You have heard it, but you will not see it. You will watch it from the throne room of God. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. At least thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven. When thou seest the sun, those, this heaven we are talking about is the celestial heaven. Where thou seest the sun, moon, and the stars even all the hosts of heaven shouldn't be driven to worship them and serve them which the lord thy god have divided unto all nations under the whole heaven he has divided the heavens unto all nations there is a nation that have continuous sun no winter who made that decision <laughs> even here in america there are places who, who don't have winter there, there's no snow but we, we believe we are in the same space oh you are not in america I think you just came from Dubai. Here in America, there are places where we can tell that they don't see snow. But we are in the United States of Mabre. Are you here? 
It's okay. We're in the United States of America. You are in Delaware. But a place like Arizona, the day they will see. I remember three years ago, Atlanta saw one inch of snow and there was a state of emergency because it was unusual. Who made that decision that we are in the same space? But God decided that some place will not experience snow. You remember in the days of old, they were in where? Goshen. There were darkness in the certain city, but the light of God was with them. That is why I'm here to speak to somebody. Arise and shine. For your light has come. The glory of God is risen upon you. You are a child of the light, not of darkness. Because you were born of light. The incorruptible word of life. I pray for you today. I'm trying to establish the second heavens. And I said, the thing that constitutes the second heaven is the sun, the moon, and the stars. Amen. I pray that the Lord will make you understand. And the second heaven was, I believe, was done on the third day, true or false. Amen. You didn't check. You say it is true. On the third day was the second heaven created. The first heaven was done on the second day. And the second heaven was done on the... So these are knowledge you have to share among yourself. If you are talking to somebody about heaven who is trying to stretch your mind beyond what the word of God is saying, let them know you are not inferior when it comes to the knowledge of the word of God. Are you in this service? May the Lord help us. Now let's go into our main one for today. Are you in this service? Genesis 1.13, still on the second heaven. But some of you don't know that it was done on the third day. Genesis 1 verse 13 and 18. Can I have an NIV so that I can read very fast? If I go beyond 11, please pardon me. Amen. Okay. And there was evening and there was morning. The third day. The third day. And God said, let there be light in the vault of the sky. So in the sky there is a vault. <laughs> so God decided when to open and went, oh, you are not in the service. You are not in the service. In the second heaven there is a vault. So there are secrets in the second heaven God can unleash mm. to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times. So if I had the time, I will talk about the blood moon. One of the revelations of the end time. It is serving the sacredness of God. It is communicating the soon coming of the Lord Jesus. And there are several blood moons we need to have that will communicate to us that the coming of the Lord is near. And I will tell you how many of them we've already had. And the one that is left. If you still doubt that Jesus is coming, church of God, he is coming. He said here that let them serve as signs to mark sacred times. So God can use the moon to communicate his sacredness concerning times and seasons. Amen. So there are things, you say, eclipse of the moon, eclipse of this, people buy glasses and they watch. They don't know God is communicating a message. But if a man and a woman of the spirit, the Bible said the sons of Issachar understood their times and they knew what Israel ought to do. So these things are going to communicate the sacred times, days and years. So you can tell if you have had a blood moon this number of times, I don't want to distort the message. Because that is another subject. If you go to the Lamb book, as we are preparing to the coming of the Lord, we will talk about that. Blood moon, dark moon, what does it mean? How many times have they already happened? Which number is left? <laughs> Which number is left for us to know that he is coming? So if you are joking, you better end your joke and stay in the narrow way. Who the are you in this place? And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was, when God said it, it was so. Every word of God concerning your advancement, it is so. It is so. I said, it is so. Every word of God concerning your elevation, I said, it is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. So on the third day from the passage of scripture, the second heavens was created, which is the celestial heaven. May the Lord bless us. Amen. 
Now we're going on the third heaven. Celebrate Jesus this morning. Third heaven. Third heaven is the dwelling place of God. The dwelling place of God. And we will establish that by scripture. Because we can't just say it and leave it like that. But we must establish it by scripture. The third heaven. Paul didn't see Peter. In the third heaven. He saw the son of man. A man that he saw 14 years ago. He saw that same man. Do you know that the day Jesus encountered Saul of Tarsus, the people around him didn't see Jesus. Do you know that? That is how powerful God is. He can show up in a place and you will not see him because you are caught up with an assignment done destiny purpose. I'm in, I'm in trust here. You know Saul of Tarsus guarded men and they took letters from the king and from the high priest to go persecute the children of God. But on their way, on their way, Jesus encountered them. The man became blind. He fell off from the horse, but the people around him didn't know why the man fell. They didn't see what he saw. So you can be in church. God can be moving. But you will not see God because you are, you are consumed with your personal agenda. The agenda was to persecute the church. But when Saul of Tarsus encountered Jesus, the rest didn't see it. May it never be your portion. The Bible said the Greek mythologist came to Philip and they said, we want to see Jesus. When you come to church, don't come and look for a man of God. Come and look for the God of the man. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. A man who don't project Jesus, run away from him because Paul said to the spiritual son, imitate me. As I imitate the Lord. Are you in this service? May the Lord help us. Make time to see the Lord for yourself. You, you can be seen open sight by discovered. You can be deceived. They did not see Jesus. So the man Paul was talking about was the man he encountered, Isaac, 14 years ago. He alone saw him. After that 14 years, he never saw him again until he was caught up in the third heaven. And in the third heaven, he saw this man standing by the right hand side of God. And he remembered that this was the man who encountered me in Damascus. The question I want to ask you today, the Jesus you encounter, when you see him again, can you see him? Ah. Say, when I find you, I find myself. But have you found God or you are finding yourself? May the Lord help us. Yes, now we share in February. Or now it is about you. The Lord help us. Second Corinthians 12 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. So when you talk about the third heaven, I say it's the dwelling place of God. You can't see it with your visible eyes. You can only see it through the supernatural eye. The dwelling place of God. It is not open up. When Stephen was seeing the heavens, as much as his eyes were open, it was through the lenses of the spirit. With your physical eye, you can't see it. That is why Paul wasn't too sure whether he was in the body or out of the body. But he remembered that he saw something. It wasn't an open vision. It is something that happens supernaturally. So when it comes to the third heaven, you can't see it with your physical eye. You can only see it with your spiritual eyes. Are you in the service? Are you in this place? So the place, God's dwelling place is in the third heavens. And during my submission, I said, as much as it's the third heaven, if you're not careful, we will limit God to a space. Because he said he's bigger than those space. But he reveals himself through the second God here, that is Jesus. For us to know that he's located because he wants to confirm the promise that was made in John 14, 1 to 3. When Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place. Jesus cannot say something that the father is not in agreement with. So he made a place called the third heaven where we can have evidence of his existence. So the third heaven is the dwelling place of God. Psalm 11, the verse 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. 
the Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. So from heaven, God watches the affairs of life. And I said, when I was doing the teaching on angels, he sends angels to observe proceedings in Zechariah 1, from the verse 8 to 11, to check proceedings on earth and bring him back report. So one thing an around tree said in his, in his book is that when they bring their report, God looks at the report concerning Newcastle. Newcastle, there's a lot of deaths going on. So I will need Jesse to become an intercessor. I want to come to the earth realm through Jesse so that I can stop the evil that is happening in Newcastle. And once I choose Jesse, I give Jesse an angel to serve for that cause and the partnership of the Holy Spirit to bring my intent to pass. But that is the time that we are caught up in ourselves and we forget the assignment of God. And yet we say God have neglected us. When we have neglected his original intent. Second Chronicles 6.21 Hearken therefore unto the supplication of thy servant of the people Israel. We shall make towards this place, place, where thou from thy dwelling place, from thy dwelling place, the dwelling place the Bible is talking about, even from heaven. So I said in my opening remarks that the goal of these three types of heaven is just to establish God's dwelling place. Last week I talked about the reality of heaven and today I want to establish the dwelling place of God by showing you the three types of heaven. So Solomon said, God, when these people pray in this temple, hear them from your dwelling place, which is even heaven. Are we okay here? Maybe you don't believe, so I'll take you further. Shout, we are here. <laughs> so how did we arrive at this conclusion? How did we arrive at this conclusion and say that, man of God, you said heaven, the third heaven is God's dwelling place. Yeah, yeah, then you do. Okay, yeah, they are. Amen. Amen. Are you in this service? Let me show you Mark chapter 16 verse 19. We want to establish this knowledge. Mark 16. Then, so then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, hear me, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into where? And sat on hold. We are talking about Jesus now. He sat on the right. If we don't even believe God dwells in heaven, we know that Jesus ascended. And everybody saw his ascension. When he ascended, he went to sit at the right hand of God. Then this concludes that God resides in heaven. And that is the third heaven. That is what Paul, the apostle, saw. Do, do you agree with me? So let me give you a summary of my presentation quickly. I said the first heaven is the atmospheric heaven, which is above us. The second heaven is the celestial heaven where it is made up of the sun moon and stars and the third heaven is where god resides he resides over the two so the two are under god if we have the time to go to uh, wickedness in high places we have to know specifically that high places the bible is talking about which of the heavens does he dwell you remember a, a, a prophetess by name deborah who was fighting for israel and the battle became very strong and you need to use the element of the second heaven so people use the elements of the second heaven for or against you you can be cursed by the sun that just as the sun is burning so should your life burn in the same way just as the sun is brightened your life should bright so you must understand that as a child of god these elements have been placed under you it will be an error for a man born of a woman to use this element against you when they are supposed to be in your charge are you here okay so i made it clear that don't be limited by this submission that god lives in the third heaven so he doesn't move he's omnipresent he cannot be limited by his space but we are trying to tell you a locatable place as jesus promised in john 14 that god dwells there because when he ascended the bible said he sat on the right hand of god God is in heaven, but he takes business of earth. He comes around. <laughs> Are you in this service? So this morning, we're going to pray in Matthew chapter 6, 9 to 10. If you have been praying this prayer today, you understand it better. Matthew 6, 9 to 10. After this manner, therefore, pray, our Father which art in, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done in earth as it is in in the heavens of God where he dwells there is no sorrow there is no pain there is no sickness there is divine provision there is the living stream there is the fountains so when that heaven is coming down now do you understand the prayer let that heaven come down to me rise up on your feet celebrate Jesus this morning celebrate it so now when you are praying and you say hallowed be thy name you are not just saying heaven but you know what constitutes the third heaven people died of cancer but in the third heaven they won't see cancer some people were, were beheaded but in the third heaven they will have their head on are you in this place so there is no pain in the third heaven where God dwells so when you pray say hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven you are not talking about the first or the second but you are talking about God's dwelling place asking God to inhabit the earth he has given you are you in the service yes. celebrate the Lord with a hand clap Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Let your will be done. Let your will be done on earth. On earth. And in my life. In my life. As it is in heaven. As it is in Lift up your voice and pray this prayer. Let your will be done, Lord. Be done, Lord. Oh, not as it is in heaven. In my life on children. Let your will be done, Lord. In my life, for my praise. Let your will be done, Lord. In Asia's and Chacha, as soon as you can ever have a little bit of a little bit of a
Matthew 6, 9 and 10. I don't know if you have it in the Amplified Version, if you have it in the TPT. This can be your prayer. Now that you understand where the heaven is, where God's dwelling place is. And I say, in that place, there is no pain. So you're asking God to copy his dwelling place in your life. You're asking God to copy his intent in your life. Last week, I said something which I need to correct myself. When I was listening to the sermon, I said, when you die, then you, the death self as a door to your Zoe life. It is wrong. The Zoe life, the Zoe, is an American accent, Zoe. The Zoe life happens the day you gave your life to Christ. That is eternal life. So you can be on earth, but you live like heaven. Because I said that your citizenship is not a possible citizenship. You became a citizen. So if you're a citizen, when you're an American citizen and you're in Ghana and there is a war, you have permission to go to the U.S. Embassy because you're a citizen of this nation. So you can be an American in Ghana and you live your life like you're in America. So it is in the supernatural. You can be here on earth, but you live your life like you're in God's dwelling place because you're a citizen of heaven. TPT. Pray like this. You know, when Jesus advised you, please take it. When Jesus advised you, take it. He said, pray like this. Our Father, dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. <laughs> Manifest your kingdom realm and cause every purpose to be fulfilled on earth as it is fulfilled in this is advice from Jesus. Take it and it will help you. Celebrate the Lord this morning. Amen. I don't know if you have some notes to share. I tell you, epignosis of heaven, the types of heaven, a lot of information. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. The first heaven is the atmospheric heaven. The heavens you can see created on the second day of creation. The second heaven is the celestial heaven, Matthew 24, 29. Created on the third day, contains the sun, moon, and stars. The third heaven, the dwelling place of God can only be seen with your supernatural eyes. God watches the affairs of life from this place. Celebrate the Lord this morning. Amen. We are so blessed. Amen. I want to take some moment and thank God for his word. I let this word bear fruit in your life. Thank God for his word. How great Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. How great thou art. How great thou art. Thank God for his word. Thank God for his word. The entrance of his word brings light and brings understanding to the simple. Thank God for the entrance of his word. Let the seed of the word grow and bear 30%, 60%, and 100% increase in your life. Pray in the name of Jesus. May the enemy not steal this word from you. Oh, sing the song if you can.
encourage you this morning to cultivate intimacy with God. A lot is happening in these last days. You can be deceived. Look for God for yourself. That is why the Holy Spirit was made available for you. There are a lot of wolves in sheep clothing. The essence of church is for us to become like Jesus. There is no point coming to church if we can't look like the, the God of the church. He's the head of the church. Amen. Do you know that in your wedding time you do makeup? You you put things, you dress very nicely. I will show you by typology and comparative theology where the makeover we are going to have is because of the wedding we are going to attend. I will show you. God will change us because in that wedding where we are going to meet the groom, you need to show up nicely. And that makeover, that happens in the third heavens, the second third heavens, that change over is for us to present ourselves spotless and blameless before the Lord. So when they come to church every day, the goal of the pastor is to chisel out things that will not make you qualify for that word thing. Open up to the word and let the word transform you. The signs are clear. Jesus is coming back soon. How great the one. How great one. Just as the two men spoke to the men of Galilee, that this Jesus you saw him ascend, he will descend. He will surely come back again. Are you ready for his glorious coming? He is not coming like he came before. He is coming with rewards. He is coming riding on a horse. Do you want your name to be written on the side of the horse? He will travel with people. People whose name are written in the temple of God in the third heaven. Are you sure your name will be written in the temple of God? May the Lord help us. For the man is coming back very soon. Amen.